hi <clears throat> hi everybody <laughs> we, we we just started in afrikaans and we like going over to english <laughs> this is serene palvi and i'm visiting with her um in her shop in devon hall and the shop's name is nova oils no nova oils and yarn nova oils and yarn so tell us about your shop and your vision and why you have this Okay, um, I'm not a new face in the yarn world. I've been around for a bit. Um, I used to have a shop up in Centurion. Um, it was called Yarn and Sally. And then my husband got a great opportunity in Cape Town and we decided to move down. So we weren't sure what was going to happen on this side. Um, we went into a little uh, rental place and then I decided to <laughs> sell my shop. So... We were here about six months and I started with oils um, and I really, really missed yarn. I just missed the colors because in the old shop I had <laughs> all the yarns hanging there in the, in the um, dining room. Yeah. So at <laughs> night while we were having dinner, I would look at the colors and I would dream about it and what I would do with it. <laughs> And I would nice. put colors together and then tomorrow morning I would put it together and I would photograph it. So I just really missed it. It was mm. sort of like something was gone. So I said to my husband, no, I think I should start up again. And he was like, okay, if you feel like it, it's fine. Mm -hmm. So um, firstly, I started a bit with the oils and some of the DIY stuff that you need. And then the yarn came with and... So basically, it is two passions that collided. So I'm really, really passionate about the, the oils, essential oils, um, because it's really changed our family's life. And um, I'm also really passionate about the yarn, especially South African yarn. Um, and I really like to support the sort of lesser known dyers, because there's lots out there. But not all of them are ma mainstream and not all of them are well known. Yes, a lot of them are, are as they call it in America, indie dyers, mm -hmm. independent dyers. It's basically the same as me. And, um, and they're also small batch dyers. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So what do you have here at the moment? So at the moment, you won't be able to see everything, but I've got Umbala. I've got some uh, sock weight of Umbala and some cashmere merino from, mm. from her as well. Then I've got S. Teresa. Umbala is in Kailami, a really great friend of mine. Um, <laughs> yeah, she was the very first person I actually contacted for merino. Oh, wow. And at first she was like, mm, she doesn't know about this. And then later she came around. So that's how, oh, how I got Umbala. <laughs> um, and then I've got S. Teresa. They're in the free state. Uh, it's a mom and daughter uh, yeah. couple. Yeah, they, <laughs> we can say yeah. that. They do. As they say in America, again, this is American terms, <laughs> yarn company. A yarn company. A yarn company. Yeah, they're a fully fetched yarn company. And they do all sorts of bases and colors and mostly ones offs. Okay. Um, then I've got Luna Fibers who is amazing. I really love her. She used to do all my stitch markers. When I started, I found her and she did all my stitch markers okay. and then she went on to dyeing. And I really love her yarn. She oh. is, she has uh, quite an eye for color. So uh, because she good. is, she, she just, she's just really good. She's a, she's an artist. So mm, yeah, no, she I can paint that. and she can make clay things and she can, do nails and she can do all sorts. So okay. she's really good with the dye. Other than the nails thing, I think we have that much in common. I'm not good at doing nails. But <laughs> I think she, she, we should actually just have a chat at some point. Yeah, she can teach you how to do nails. <laughs> no, I'm not interested. <laughs> okay. And then I've got a little bit of Annie Lane. Um, Annie Lane normally takes a bit of a break over summer because okay. her stuff is hand spun. It's really warm. It's done on the farm. So um, she's got. She's in the free state. In the free state, she's in yes. Free state. Um, near wow. Smithfield. Um, so she does these ones that you can see here. That's hers. Um, 
she normally does a really big market that Frey Fears in Bloemfontein, um, which wasn't held yest uh, not it, yesterday, it, it, last it, it, year. Last, last year. <laughs> yes, that COVID, so they didn't do that. One of the festivals that I still want to go mm. to, I haven't actually So she been actually, there. she's taking a little bit of a break because mm. she says it's not worth dying if you're not going to the festival and also not dying over um, summer because mm -hmm. it's just that's not a market yeah it's and too it's, warm and, and she, but she does amazing community work we yes. can talk about that a bit later yeah. but i mean she does really i know she um trained the ladies that work on the farm to spend yes she does yes. a lot of amazing work yeah them. and then we've got amara amara used to be quintel pucker they're still quintel pucker but oh, okay. the, the yarn name has got that's changed and it's now Amora. I did They've not know got that. Yeah. I talk to them all the time. I don't know. Them. Really? No. <laughs> <laughs> so they do all sorts of bases. Mm -hmm. I actually spoke to Stephen this morning and they've got a new base um, that's with Chantal. Uh, it's, I think, combed baby alpaca. Alpaca, Royal Cone, Baby Alpaca, something mm. like that. So they do all sorts of bases. There's Royal Alpaca, Sock, and they've got um, Bamboo and Merino mixed, um, just plain Merino. And mm. yeah, so they have quite an extensive thing going on. Mm. And then something I'm really, really excited about is the Earth Yarn. So it's a new indie dyer that's really, really fresh on the scene. So yes. they have decided to do um, bamboo, start with bamboo. So this is that's double amazing. neck bamboo. I've, n I've n um, never, that's not something you see, yeah. actually. Oh. This is completely new. I just want to say that, that in South African terms, is, uh, I've never seen this. Uh, usually, the double neck. Yeah, but also if you see bamboo in our shops, it's usually in on the cotton side of things mm -hmm. and it's also dyed like cotton mm -hmm. it doesn't look mm -hmm. like merino this looks yeah like merino so she's using basically the same techniques mm. that you would use if you're dyeing animal fiber yeah she's using those same techniques yeah. and as we say in afrikaans this will do me is I promise you that yeah. because I've dyed, I've dyed cottons mm -hmm. and dyeing animal fiber and dyeing um, plant-based fiber is not the same thing. Mm -hmm. So she is doing one amazing job. Yeah. yeah. And the double knit is also very scarce. Oh, okay. um, the thing about the double knit and why she decided to do the double knit is because it's got a bit of a better hold. It's, yes. it's stronger and it's got more structure. So it doesn't sag like the thinner bamboo because there's a lot of people that's against bamboo because it it tends to stretch a bit but yes. this one doesn't it holds its shape because oh, it is it's got more structure to it so that's what she decided to do the double knit she tested it first and mm -hmm. then decided to do the double knit well i might just take a screen or Wait. two or three no <laughs> And then there so, I also have some kits um, that Umbala does. Um, she likes to do those kits. They're really nice for jerseys. They're 10, ten skeins. That's the um, bamboo cotton mix. Okay. Okay. I can see it. Yeah. Uh, so it's really great for marling. So you do, yeah, and you also do one maybe strand. A fade. Yeah. Or a fade. fade yeah. Yeah, they, yeah. She does different colors. And there's um, small um, kits from Esteriza that you can use for socks. Yes, I yeah. can see those are also good. The smaller yeah. ones are, will be good for like a fade of shawl. Yeah, it's a uh, hundred grams, so it's really nice for, for like a shawl, like one yeah. of those one one skein wonder type yeah. of shawls, which you or can fade. Or for nice, in. if you want to do a fancy fade pair of socks or something like that. No, <laughs> <laughs> don't give you ideas. No, you don't understand. <laughs> I've got that pair of socks underneath my boot, so. I, I I can't see it if there's boots there. Yeah, I'll <laughs> I'll show it to you later. But I wear my socks a lot, mm. and I wear them underneath stuff. So my socks are never fancy. Okay. I always think I just want them to be functional, you know. Mm. But there are many people out there who feel they should wear fancy socks. So that oh, well. by the faded ones. <laughs> um, but I would I would think well, because I'm looking at it now. And that would make an amazing fade. Mm. And especially those two colors, if you buy uh, 
both packs. Both packs. Yeah. You can make a really beautiful fade out of those colors. Ooh, definitely. Okay, I shouldn't be here. <laughs> okay, and then from there, obviously, you can't see that. I'll do a tour just now, if Almeru will allow me. Yes, of course. <laughs> we've, got the, um, we've got some butters, mango butter, shea butter, coconut butter, no, cocoa butter, not coconut butter, yes, um, that thing. you use for soap making. And then on top of that there, we've got some molds that you also use for your soaps. And um, if you want to do liquid soaps um all there and veggie capsules for your oils and then that side of the shop is all the diy stuff for your oils so um oils are a concentrate i will always do the thing with the kids i say no it's like a cool drink concentrate then you have to mix it with something otherwise it's too potent especially yes. the, the doTERRA oils that i use so you use just a couple of drops in a container that you fill up with a carrier oil and you use it or you put some water with it and you use it as a spray. So that's that side. So we try to do the shop sort of like uh, to yeah. have everything available but still separate from each other. Okay, so how do you, how do you, obviously you are very serious about keeping things natural then. Yes, I do. Um, unfortunately, we live in a convenience world and it's not always possible to have everything natural, but mm. we try to do as much as possible. Um, we try to do our own soaps, deodorant, because um, many women don't realize that aluminium that's in our roll-on is really bad for you. Mm. It causes all sorts of sicknesses and it's just the heavy metals are not good for your body. No, it's not. So Either. I make, yeah, I make my own roll-ons. I do soaps and I don't have any medication in my house anymore. <laughs> if we need something, if mommy, my tummy is aching, I say, come here, I'll take out the oils. <laughs> I'll do that. I'll do the oils, yeah. So um, we try to do everything natural and then obviously with the yarns, I only stock natural yarns. Okay, so that's where I want to go. What is your take on the natural side of the yarns? Because I think a lot of people will ask these questions. Okay, I uh, we've talked about this a lot. Mm -hmm. Both we we both know that there is a place for acrylics. You can't get away yes. with it um if you're going to do something for charity then working with wool or cotton isn't going to be viable i mean that's no. that's just not so it, it has its place mm -hmm. but for the everyday person making something for themselves what would you say to them about the value of paying a little bit more and using natural yarns rather mm -hmm. than going to a local yarn shop and buying something cheap or even worse something cheap that's imported yeah <laughs> that that's my that's, yeah. that's my pet peeve but so um, i've got it i'm really slow i'm very slow at knitting like extremely ex extremely slow <laughs> it is actually just frustrating for me to knit um yeah i've got so many knitting projects i've never finished finish. because it's just i'm really slow mm -hmm. and then i'm also not a quick crochet as well i i'm fairly good at crocheting but i'm not i'm not fast so You're wearing a crochet top, top i'm wearing a crochet top yeah it's just a simple tee and it took, took me weeks to make so yeah i'm really not fast so for me to spend money on acrylic wool or i don't want to dish the acrylic wool i mean there's lots of people who use it and lots of people that's comfortable with it but if I'm going to spend money and my time, which is really, really precious to me, I want to spend my money on something that's going to last and something that's going to have value. Because I just, I don't want to make something that I spend hours on because it literally takes me hours. I know it takes most people hours, but me especially because I'm it so slow. Um, I, I and understand. then something pulls or it's just not good for the environment and mm -hmm. I would rather then spend my time and my money on something that is worth it yeah 
Well, I, I agree on that. I look, pilling is with merino is a given. Yeah. That's why, just FYI, for those who don't know, <laughs> if you if you buy merino to make like a top or a jersey, then just buy one of those little clicks. Uh, uh, what do you call it? Pulling. Anti fluff thing. Yeah, things. those fluffy things that you <laughs> that shave. You shave. The, you shave the fluffy stuff off <laughs> because it's gonna happen. There's no getting away with it. It's gonna mm. happen. I mean, this one is already, already, and especially if it's something you wear a lot. Mm. If it's something you're going to wear a lot, mm. especially an animal fiber. Yeah. Uh, um, Plant-based fi fibers are not prone to pulling, mm -mm. but um, animal-based fibers are. Um, but other than that durability and value definitely also you you spoke about the environment mm. so what's your take on synthetics versus <clears throat> natural fibers and the environment well our water ends up in the ocean and it has been shown that those really microfibers from the acrylic ends up in the ocean. Yeah. And apart from all the plastic that's already in the ocean that people throw away, and I saw a video the other day of someone sweeping the street and then sweeping all the garbage into the stormwater drain. So where does it end up? In the ocean. So uh, apart from it's, that, that's bad. it's bad. It's terrible. I was terrible. watching and I couldn't believe what I was seeing. Um, and that person probably doesn't know any better. He doesn't know any better. He doesn't. He probably doesn't even have a bag to put it in. So where do you put it? Put it in the in the drain. No. It's a drain. It's an is a dustbin. Yes. So um, I think we should be more conscious about what goes in our washing machine, what goes in the water, and what eventually ends up in the ocean. Because it does end up in the ocean. Mm -hmm. Lots of our water ends up there eventually. Yes. So. I think that's the thing that you have to think about. It's not just you and it's not your skin only because your skin is your biggest organ. So it absorbs everything. And people are always like, oh, I'm allergic to this and I'm allergic to that. But it's a compounded effect. If you don't look after your skin mm -hmm. and you don't look after your health and you don't look after what you put in your mouth and what goes into your gut, eventually going to have problems you eventually people have autoimmune diseases so it's not just about what you wear on your skin it's about what goes on after you've washed it where does the water go um where does it end up so people don't always think that far they're like mm, it's easy to wash i put in a washing machine it's not a problem but where does the water go and also i think if you look at it like that if I always say, you know, if you again, uh, it's like my aunt. She does charity work. She mm -hmm. she knits um, sweaters for kids in um, orphan orphanages. Mm -hmm. But and for that specific thing, there is no way on earth that she can use anything mm -hmm. else than a crown. No, obviously not. Um, because they don't know how to handle it. It's, mm -hmm. I mean, if you make wool stuff, it's going to be a piece of felt within the first mm -hmm. couple of days with the first wash. And even with cottons, it's, it's for what they are doing, that's great. Mm -hmm. But if you're going to do it for yourself and your own family or give it as a gift to somebody, mm -hmm. It is always a better idea to keep it yes um, healthy and I was actually talking to somebody the other day and I mean you can tell me what you think about this but a lot of people do um, like beanies they will make beanies for mm. cancer mm. patients and that sort of thing and they make the and, and they do it out of the goodness of their hearts yes but they buy acrylics to do it mm. And I always feel, oh, you know what, these people have so much, many chemicals going mm. through their mm. bodies mm. already. Yeah. That, I don't know, it's dangerous. Mm. My mom had cancer, she had lung cancer, and um, she had chemo, and she lost all her hair. And she told me the little that I saw her while she was sick, because they used to, well, my dad still stays in bloom, so we really didn't see them often while she was sick. 
So she just told me that everything is heightened. Mm -hmm. it, when you touch her like this, it felt like you punched her. Your skin, everything is just like hyper mode. So if you're going to give someone a beanie, which is great, it's absolutely fantastic that people do it. Um, it needs to be something that's really soft. So if you put that thing on your head, it can't be scratchy at all. And it can't be making you sweat. Um, because Merino, it takes the, the moist away. So if you do sweat, you're not going to feel like, oh my goodness, I'm so hot. Yes, yeah. yeah, but with, with, with acrylic, it's... The, the heat stays inside. It's like putting a piece of plastic yeah, on it's, heads, the Yeah, the heat stays inside so you feel more uncomfortable and it feels like you're being suffocated. So, again, I don't want to say, oh, acrylic's bad. And I don't want to, I am a yarn snob, I will admit yes, it. I completely <laughs> agree. And uh, It's like I told you, I'm a coffee snob. I'm yeah. a coffee snob, I'm a yarn snob. <laughs> And I'm a wine snob, and that's where my snobbery <laughs> stops. But yes, I'm afraid I am. Yeah, and but you have to be. Fine. You have to think about where is it going. Who's yes. going to receive this beanie? I once made my daughter went to a shop with me before I had my first shop, and she saw this glitter wool. It had a little bit of a glitter in it. Yes, and she yes, yes. I know. Was that adamant too. she wanted that for a beanie. <laughs> so I was like, I don't think this is going to work, but. Okay, and she picked a color for her, and she picked a color for her sister, and I made the most beautiful berets yeah. for them. And she put it on, I swear it was 20 minutes. She was red all yes. the way around, yeah, like red. And she was itching, and she said, this is not nice, what's going on? And I had to get my mom-in-law, she um, does quilting, so I had to get 100% pure cotton from her that I could make into strips and then work it into, into the, bean, the, the the beret, the yeah. part that touched her, her skin. Yes. Because she just couldn't wear it. That's the thing. I think if we if you're not used uh, to get back to if you want to make like a charity mm. beanie or something for that specific reason. Or say if you're thinking because I know my sister in law does a lot of work for people uh, for preemie babies. Mm. Try get cotton, mm. try and find a, a, you know, even if it is a less expensive cotton, mm. because not all of them are expensive, mm. but, um, yeah, I think cotton is a better call, if you, yeah. if you can't find merino, that's good. I know a lot of people, just on the other note, cotton is always a safe place. Yes. It is. Yes. Because in those cases... Some people are allergic to the lanolin in yeah. the sheep wool. Yeah. So unless you know that it's a super wash, mm. then stick to the cottons. Yeah. But I mean, most of the stuff that we have on the shelves, most of the yarn stores have super wash wool. Yes, they do. And Elaine does a non-super wash, yes. but she's one in very, very few people. I mean, most most yarns are super wash. Are super wash. I don't even think they have to put it on the label anymore because it's sort of like a given that it is super yeah, wash. I think you have to put it on the label if it's not. Yeah, if it's yeah. not. And um, when you talk about the beanies for the preem babies, I mean, a preem baby beanie is this size. Yes. You can get 20, almost <laughs> oh, a 50 gram thing. ball of yarn. So if you buy a cotton that's, 35, 40, 45 rand, and you get 10 or 15 or 20 beanies out of that, it's yeah. still economical. It's not like you're wasting money or yes. it's this really expensive thing. So, yeah. I think the only thing where I would say is if you want to make like um, like toys, for, yeah. then acrylics are fine. Yeah, so or if, if you like want to do immersed rice cotton, can also really work well worth, for yes. amigurumi. Yeah, it yeah, works so really well. But especially if it's like for a charity type mm. of project, then it's not a crisis, mm. you know. Again, we, um, where where I always put my foot down, boot and all, <laughs> is usually I say, well, if you're going to buy acrylics, that's fine, but please just look at the label and see yes. if it's made in South Africa. Yeah. yeah. Because that does still bring an income mm. for mm. so many people. Mm. What, at the moment, if you would say, let's talk business. Mm -hmm. 
it's one of the things that that's one of the reasons I'm doing these interviews. Yeah. Okay. Actually, the main reason. <laughs> because I feel there are so many small companies coming up now. So you know, I have my tiny little business, mm -hmm. and but very few people know of yeah. those people. And I, I said to somebody the other day, you know what? There's a difference between you sitting there talking to me and people meeting you. Yes. Then having your photo um, on your Instagram and being on WhatsApp. Mm. There's a difference. There's mm. a, it, it's a more getting to know yeah, that person definitely. for who they are. Um, what do you think, which strategies can, can people in small businesses start applying spe specifically in this type of business mm. to make themselves known better, to... You know, I don't know, just to to support the business mm -hmm. side. Mm -hmm. And and because, I mean, we've talked about that before and I, we've seen it before, mm -hmm. is how can we get up, go about to supporting each other instead mm -hmm. of just being so competitive mm -hmm. that we mm -hmm. are actually breaking each other down? I think um, the thing for me is great service mm -hmm. i'm a big fan for great service yes. i mean if something's wrong i will swap it for you mm -hmm. i mean the other day i had metal balls that rusted and i i literally i i sent six new ones plus i changed the balls because mm -hmm. I just, I believe if someone's going to spend money with me, I'm going to give them good service. Yes. So I think the thing is, it if you give good service, then you're going to have word of mouth. People mm -hmm. are going to say, oh, this, and this person is really, she goes above and beyond. Mm -hmm. The other thing for me is I have never had a problem sending someone to another shop. If you come to me and they want something, I will tell you, this store has got what you need. Yes. Or this person will be able to help you. I don't have what you need or like say for instance I don't have any acrylics but there is a shop in town that you can go and get your acrylics. Yes, 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 yes. I really do not have a problem with supporting another store. Um, I also think people tend to have a favorite store and they mm -hmm. tend to go to their favorite store. Cool. So if they have come to know you um, or if it's a friend of yours and they start buying from you and you've got what they need and you give good service, they will always come back to you. Um, and I've also, people said, yo, I need to go and get stuff there. And I'm like, then do it. Don't feel like you're not allowed to now visit another yarn store. Of yeah, course you are. I mean, if I go to other towns, I go to their stores. I love yes. browsing other yarn stores and <laughs> see what they have. Not... To say, oh, I want to do this and this the same as they do. It's just to see what they've got. And they've got different things that I do. And I will spend money there as well. Because I know they need it as well. They, we're really struggling. I mean, um, crocheting and knitting. Yeah, people have started doing it again because of lockdown. And they were sitting at home and thinking, well, how can I pass the time? But people, there's so many peoples who, uh, peoples, <laughs> so many people. <laughs> people, that's lost. okay. We're not editing anything out. So people, we, we need to give somebody, somebody out there something to laugh about. <laughs> <laughs> at least I can laugh at myself. Yes. Um, <laughs> people who have lost their jobs or who had to cut their salaries. I know people who are on 20% of their salary. I know. Yes. No, that's so uh, if I go to my husband and say he's on 20% of his salary and I'm like, I want to go and get Marino, he's going to laugh at me because you just can't afford it. So we have to support each other. I, if I need crochets that I don't have, then I will always go to the store that has um, or knitting needles or whatever. So I believe you should support each other. It's the right thing to do. It is the right thing to do. And I, I think um, because, I mean, we've, we, while I was in the art industry, I always thought, you know, why are these people so nasty with each other? <laughs> and then I thought, okay, so I'm going to go into the craft side now and nobody's going to be nasty with each other. <laughs> I think I, 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 I lived in a bit of a... No, definitely. 
how I was I was ever so slightly wrong about that. Mm. And I I would you talked about twenty the other day, uh, or twenty right now. But I was thinking about twenty when we had the festival, mm. and um, that's nice when people are actually supporting each other. Yeah. You know, when we have the festivals and you get together and you are actually supporting one another, I would go to another booth and buy something there because mm -hmm. that's something that I don't stock yeah. or I can't make. Mm -hmm. And uh, often when you, f when you go to a market, mm -hmm. you end up spending more money than you make. <laughs> yeah. It's like that when you're a vendor, you know, you spend more money than you make, yeah. but you're supporting yes. the other store and... I think, um, what's, what's your take on the markets? Do you think, like uh, we were just saying, a lot of people lost their jobs. Okay, so if somehow we can, I've got this thing in my head mm -hmm. about how can we help each other, support each other in a way that we can all benefit from. So, so if I have, say, I know there's a lot of people, there are a lot of people who uh, collaborate. So mm. they will collaborate, yarn dyers will collaborate with a designer. I'm mm. going to do that as soon as I get back to my spin wheel. <laughs> I've got one designer that I'm going to send yarn to. Um, so that's the one side. But what about the makers? So do you have any idea on how we can do that? So you've got a dyer, you've got a seller, and you've got a maker. How, how can we bring everybody together? So with my, I've never done markets. I'm not, I'm not the type of person who can sit at the market for the whole day. I just, it's not my personality. I need to sit. I, I just can't. It's, I feel confined, and I, I hate feeling confined. Okay. So um, I've never done markets, to be quite honest. I've also never uh, made a blanket. To be quite honest, <laughs> so there's stuff that I just don't do. Don't do um, yes. Like you don't drink coffee from. Yeah, no, no, no that's not. <laughs> that's fine. That's, we all have that's our fine. Thing. We all have our um, thing. I believe the markets are really good for the dyers to go to because then you can actually meet the dyer behind the wool that you're using or the yes. yarn that you're using. I love those markets because you get to meet the person behind the yarn, mm. and then you can also sort of understand why they do the things they do and why they do the colors because you get a little bit of you you get to know them a little bit and you mm. see a little bit of their, their personality it's like with my colors you will never see a color without blue in it really there's always blue in it somewhere <laughs> you may notice i like blue <laughs> so even when i try to just do a green all of a sudden, there'll some be something blue in there. <laughs> oh, that's why Brahman said they do the collaboration with the, the deciding what dye they're going to use. Yes. Uh, I listened to them and I was thinking, yeah, because I think you you get into the habit of only buying for your store that you like. Yes. If you don't like yellow, mm, I don't want to stock yellow, but you shouldn't do that anyway. Yes. <laughs> so getting back to the makers, and I think if there is makers around, like Mariana from Sweet Skeins. Uh, oh, no, not sweet skin. No, sweet crochet dreams. It's so close together. Um, she, I think she collaborates a lot. Mm. I think she uses local yarns, and then she gets people from all over to test for her. Mm. Um, I mean, we've got book writers, South African pattern book writers, and I think to give those people a chance to use local yarns in their books and they publish it as our local yarns as that brings together yes. the market i mean yeah. it brings together the person because i i can follow a pattern you can give me a pattern i can follow it but don't try and convince me to design something Ooh, i'm out i can't do designing i'm really <laughs> stupid with no. that and i also can't dye That's... yarn but i can sell yarn and i can sell patterns i can make something that people can see oh and they'll ask what did you use and I mean, yes. that's the way you get people to come together. The the maker, the designer, and the yarn make, the two makers who bring together. If they can collaborate and say, um, I'm going to give you yarn, or I'm going to give you yarn at wholesale price, and then you do a pattern for me. Um, I think that works well. 
So I say, okay, just as an idea, mm -hmm. say we have a yarn festival again, mm -hmm. um, and a hand dyer, a, a hand dyer provides the yarn, the these to the designer, the designer designs the the um, shawl or the uh, sweater or whatever and then you have test knitters or mm -hmm. you have y yes you have test knitters mm -hmm. who will knit it up so if at least one of those test knitters and the designer <coughs> and the hand dyer can come as a group mm -hmm. and represent that almost item that you have made yeah. Some somehow we need to get together because mm. if we if we are constantly and I mean I know there are many people who mm. are out there with collaborations but it it tends to be um, only for that for that brand mm. or yeah. and and the person that I'm talking about that I'm that I'm going to um, send you on to is Yuanita uh, mm. Yuanita and that's a lovely woman yeah <laughs> and she does. She has collaborations with different people. Yes, yes. Um, she's well known. In her own capacity. In her, no, in her area. Yeah, I mean, well known which in her is capacity in, as a designer. Which is in Gauteng area. Mm. But in the Western Cape, I no, guess, people don't, don't know, know her. about her. And and we have so many talented people. I think the thing is, the thing is, is as well, if you can... If you if you've designed something or you've designed a couple of things and you see oh goodness I'm really good at this, contact your local yarn store. Tell them listen, I think I might be good at this or I think yes. I should try this or what do you think? Let's do something together because I think there's so many talented talented knitters and crocheters out there mm. and I don't know who you spoke to about designing something for the south african women because having a pattern is great oh no that's just me yeah but i also struggle yes. i mean to get a pattern to fit you to fit you as yes. a south african woman and you can to use south african yarn because you get uh, so many patterns yes. i mean there's thousands yes. of patterns and then people will ask on social media about the american brands that we don't get here Yes. Because that's yes, what the yes, pattern yes. says. You must use this or this or this um, American brand. Yeah, or, or European or whatever, but it's yeah. not South African. And, and also, we are, South Africa uh, is a very interesting nation. Mm -hmm. Because I think <laughs> in America, for instance, you can still say, oh, I'm an Italian. Hmm. Oh, no, I'm free. In this country, you don't know what you are. <laughs> You're South African, that's it. <laughs> I mean, honestly, we don't know what we are. We're like such a mixed breed that you can't, <laughs> you can't go on, your, you know, I am this or I am this, so that should be my body shape. It doesn't work like no, that here. No. I mean, honestly, somewhere, somewhere in, in your, uh, yeah, yeah, there'll be some... My husband always says this very clearly. He says, if you look at his butt, you will see clearly that there is koi blood. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because I mean, some of us do have that problem. We have yeah. big butts. And, and <laughs> to get a pattern that fits you, I mean. That's not going to happen. <laughs> so, I think in that respect, it's it's a, it will be a good thing. I know Donna, and I'm, I'm going to have a... Um, interview with her as well I, I absolutely love that woman she's got she brought out a couple of years ago she brought out a book mm -hmm. about the yarn industry and I really want to when I do have that interview because I think I've actually went and bought that book about the South African yarn industry but a lot of stuff has changed mm. since then mm. again mm. I would really like her feedback on you know where things have changed yeah um and she's also got a lot of patterns mm. that she does, but her patterns are for her brand. Yeah. 
Yeah. That's the thing. Her, that, because yeah. she's a dyer and uh, um, so her patterns are full It of obviously um, enhances her sellability of a yarn that she yes. can give a pattern with. That's what Annie Lane does as well. Yes. Because she's got such a unique yarn, you can't just follow a normal like jersey, jersey pattern. Yes. Because you have to knit it or crochet it looser to see the whole effect of the hand yes. spun yarn. And hand, so, hand spun is a tricky thing. I know, mm. I've made stuff with that. Mm. I've made tops with it. And um, if you, if your needle, I always upper needle sides mm. from the mm. pattern yeah, because yeah, yeah. It's, it's never exactly yeah. just one thickness. Yeah, it's and always... It doesn't well, matter how evenly you spin. Yeah, yeah. But so that's what makes it a unique lovely, I love thing. It. And it, yes. that's what's so lovely about it. Yeah. Yeah. The other thing I wanted to say about... Now I can't remember. Now it slipped my mind. Um, okay, okay, never mind. Reverse pattern. <laughs> Mental I'll, reverse pattern. I'll remember just now. <laughs> now we were talking about the um, the designers and the the supporting of yes. each other's stores. I think so. I think if we can, if we can get past the. I always say, you know, this internal politics mm. is a is a problem. A huge thing. It's yeah. a problem because uh, we tend to cater for, as you just said, for what we like mm. instead mm. of thinking of other people. I've also found, I told my husband the other day, I just don't, I, I feel almost like we, the minute you have an idea and you start doing it, there's somebody who watches <laughs> and copies and it. before you've even really gotten your idea running because as you as you said i'm slow well i'm slow in that respect i've got like a ton of ideas but i'm always you know i take my time to get there yeah. before i've even been there there's someone else doing it already doing it already <laughs> It's like they just read your mind while you walk past them and now they're doing it. No, actually, it's because I don't shut up. Oh. <laughs> you give your ideas away. I give my ideas away. <laughs> so, um, uh, you know, so we live and we learn. But, I mean, in terms of, let's talk about new ideas. About like, It's like this lady now. She's mm. doing this amazing stuff. Yeah. on a base that nobody would have thought of. Mm. Do you think there's room for inno innovation? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I'm sure there's so many bases that's available mm. that people are just either scared or not familiar with or, I don't know, that they just not trying. So... I know Hilda once said that they, she's getting bored of the stuff that's available because, yeah, it's nice colors and everybody do their own thing with a dyeing, but it's the same base, it's the same base, it's the same base. Mm. So, I mean, why wouldn't you try something like this? Yes. If it's available, why wouldn't you try it? Or say, for instance, what if one of the malls have got camel hair? Why wouldn't you dye it? I mean, Camel's yeah. Creepy, though. <laughs> Why is an alpaca creepy name? <laughs> uh, you know what? Actually, I, um, I'll i talk to you about that later, but I'm not a big alpaca fan, actually. Is it? Mm -mm. <laughs> I, I, um, I've got the, the, what I use as my winter base is the DK mm -hmm. that you get from SMO. That's got 50% uh, merino, 25, 25, mm -hmm. baby alpaca, mm -hmm. and kid moe. That's fine. But alpaca on its own, uh, I've, I've, I've try to spin with it now mm. and somehow the spinning just mm. I think I'm too used to merino and moe mm. I love spinning moe yeah, see I don't like moe uh, yeah see it's a personal thing I think I'm I've got a really sensitive skin oh uh, okay like extremely sensitive um do the I can't wear watches oh uh, okay. I mean I I what you call it for foul I peel underneath yeah. my ring. Okay. Anything that touches me makes me red or irritates my skin. So oh, okay. Um, if it's not the softest kid moe around, I even kid silk. It's it's a stretch for me to try and wear it close. Kid to silk. Kid silk. Seriously. Even, yeah. Oh wow. So it needs to be 
the outer layer for me. I can't. It can't. Can't be, be against anywhere your skin. near my skin. No. Well, I I'll tell you this much. I think I mentioned it in one of the other episodes. But I made this testnet, mm -hmm. and I got this bunch of mohair. Mm -hmm. Didn't know anything about mohair at that point except that it's a goat's hair, and I mm -hmm. absolutely loved it. And I spun it up. I I actually. Blended it with merino, made this fantastic top. I dyed mm -hmm. it myself. I love that top, except I can't wear it. Oh. No, it's not kid mohair. Oh. It's like an old goat's hair. <laughs> but can't, so you can't no. wear anything underneath it no. either? No, two t-shirts underneath. Really? And I, if it gets the smallest bit of heat, every single little hair of that goat stands up and scratches you through the two layers of t-shirt. Oh, so wow. I understand completely what yeah. you say. Kid, yeah, yeah. kid mohair is it's fine, but it has to be really, it must be mm. kid mohair, yeah. otherwise it's not going to work. Yeah. Um, have you have you ever used, um, have you ever seen or used the, the uh, what's the word, Hasi? <laughs> Angora. Yeah, that is Angora. I have actually ones. have a pair of booties that my dad used to buy my dad bought it for my oldest daughter when she when i was still pregnant with her so i should have taken it out it's the most adorable to it's the natural color of the um angora rabbit okay and it's the fluffiest softest stuff that you'll ever find so it was it was some th somewhere in the free state that my dad bought it at the farm. Oh, okay. And it's two knitted booties that he bought for my daughter. And I never so let her cute. wear it because <laughs> it's got hair standing up. And I was just thinking, how will I wash this after? So it's in its package still. I never let her wear it. So it's there in a memory may box. Maybe like for your granddaughter one day. <laughs> yeah, um, then we can take it out and like, we'll rem reminisce about it. You know? <laughs> One well, day long ago, there was this farm. <laughs> there was there was a woman, a one, a customer that bought, brought me five skeins of that the mm -hmm. rabbit angora, mm -hmm. and I've never felt it before. Mm -hmm. And I have to say, it's very soft, but it's very fluffy. It is fluffy. Yeah. Fluffy beyond measure. Mm. So when, when we talk about bases for yarns, mm -hmm. at the moment, what is your most popular one? Well, it changed since I moved down because in Gauteng, it's warmer all year round. It's way warmer all year round. Mm -hmm. People say Joburg is colder than Cape Town. Mm -hmm. You haven't lived through a uh, Cape Town winter. No. <laughs> but it's dark all the time. Oh my goodness. And it's wet yeah, and the wind wet. blows. Yeah, <laughs> it's really freezing cold. So yeah. if it, the, on the news, the weather, it says, oh, it's like 15 degrees. It's more like eight or nine. Yes. Because it feels, it like, feels yeah. like that. It's really cold. Depending so, on the wind. Yeah. People, when I came down, my favorite base, my all-time favorite is lace. And people would look like me and like, oh, you're crazy. Um, because, yeah, you can wear merino lace, but it's not warm enough for Cape Town, for yeah. Western Cape. You it's have fine to for go, spring and autumn, but yeah, not. You have to go down to the double knit. Mm -hmm. And even thicker than that. I actually made myself a, a bulky sweater mm -hmm. from, from really bulky yarn. Because... It just needs to be warm. So in the Western Cape, and I've also spoken to Stephen about it once. He was up in Joburg and I said to him, but I would prefer a thinner yarn. Mm -hmm. And also, I just, my favorite is lace. I, it takes ages. That's probably mm -hmm. why I also take ages to crash or something because yeah, it's so thin. It takes <laughs> but I really love, I just like the stitch definition of mm -hmm. lace. Um, and I spoke to him about it and he was like, you know, doesn't sell no not down yeah no. up there yes um that's really uh, uh, that's the thing for me is i had to change making a mind shift that's still sort of hard for me um but i think um bamboo cotton is mm -hmm. at the moment the most popular yeah but, because but it crochets standard. incredibly nicely and it knits incredibly nicely 
and it's got the structure of the cotton. So that, I've always loved it, but I think there's a thing going on about it now. That's the one thing that I, I sell out all the time, is that base. Do you think that's going to change now in winter again? Probably will. Mm -hmm. It will probably change to double knit, merinos, alpacas, the, the yeah. warmer stuff. You said you, you found a change from, say, Joburg to here mm -hmm. in terms of base, mm -hmm. money-wise? <laughs> <laughs> Is that um, a stupid question? <laughs> I don't think people understand and realize the um, living cost in Cape Town is quite a bit higher than Joburg. Um, yeah, if you've moved down here and you had to buy a house... <laughs> You'll understand. You'll understand, yes. Um, I think also people in Joburg tends to spend more money on um, their hobbies um, and things like the stitch markers, um, yeah, crochet yeah. hooks, all sorts of the bits, you yeah. know? The what, bits counts, that, yeah. what counts on this side of Does the country... As a luxury item. Yes, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> I actually had a, once I had a, um, a pop-up in Bloom, mm -hmm. and I took my whole shop. I literally took my whole shop. <laughs> it was madness, I swear. Um, and I took all my yarns, and I took all the accessories, the mm -hmm. bags and the crochet hook holders, and all the accessories, and none of the accessories sold. Not one so, single thing. Not a bag, not nothing. Only mm -hmm. the yarn. First the merino went, because at that stage there wasn't a really nice shop in, in Bloom. Um, now there's um, Rebecca, is it Yarn Stash? I can't remember what a, the physical store is, but her page is Yarn Stash. She's got merino now. Mm -hmm. And um, one of her kind used to supply to her store mm -hmm. when she was still in Bloom. Um, so, but that was before then. I mean, there really wasn't merino available to them. So they had to buy online, which is great. I'm a love of online shopping. Mm. I love just going on, on, online, online and buying yeah, things. No, true. I, um, you don't actually have to go to the shop then. Yeah, I must buy. say, I think um, lockdown has even made me more of an online shopper. Mm -hmm. I used to be an online shopper, but now yeah, I'm, yeah. if I have to go to the shop, I'm like, oh, do I really need to go? Um, so... Yeah, I think Joburg people, they like to have the accessories as well as the yarn. But I think it's because they spoiled for choice with the yarn. They can go into practically any yarn store and they will find merinos and cottons and, 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 and. Mm. Where down here, it's not as really, readily available. Yes, and I, I, I found... And uh, the reasons why I'm asking these things, because there was one point that I thought I was going absolutely nuts. Um, I, I really thought I, I really have to have myself tested here <laughs> because I would say to people, you know, even from here, the, this part of the Western Cape, the minute you go over the mountain, mm. there's a very definite change mm. in um, the way people look at money and the way people will spend money. Mm. Uh, if you go to a market, for instance, in the in like in the rural areas, mm -hmm. you will have people walking by, looking at your product and saying, calling another person and saying, "Look at this." And then when they walk away, you hear the woman say to her husband, "You're gonna make that for me, right?" Mm -hmm. And that's like booster. Mm. When you are in the Cape uh, Cape Town markets, people come there to buy. Mm. They come to that market to find something yeah. that they want to buy. Yeah. And that's on the city side. Yes. So, and, but even, uh, and I've been to that Joburg, uh, I don't know if you know that market. The one that's at the school. Mm -mm. Remember, it was lockdown. No, 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 <laughs> it was a long time ago. No, I mean, it was lockdown. We haven't really gone too much. <laughs> no, 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 this was a long time ago that we were there. 
there was a market uh, I can't remember which side it is of Johannesburg oh in Joburg I think yeah, yeah no in Joburg yeah. oh, oh, oh. I know Donna goes there she's got a shop there Kalispan has a shop there it's right next to it was actually a school um, um yeah it's school four way it's in four ways somewhere there yeah, yeah it's like an organic market yes that one yes I can't remember the name now and I, I went to that market and I the, there's such a difference but even mm. between those buyers and Cape Town buyers mm. Mm. the way they they are there to buy something mm. they know where they can find whatever yeah. they want to buy and I think that's the uh, do you think it will be to our benefit to maybe just look at Cape Town, at, at Joburg markets and implement some things in our market setups? Mm, yeah. Or do you think we're going to lose the Cape Town vibe then? Uh, yeah, that's a hard thing to say. That's really hard. Um, I've realized that Camptonians are very much about where does it come from, how natural is it. Um, yeah, they sort of, they just, they're not the, I'm going to just buy this because I like it. They're very much mm -hmm. in tune with okay. where it comes from. Is it natural? Is it organic? Um, yeah, I found that. Yeah, Cape Townians are different. They <laughs> they spend different and they look yes, at things differently. differently. Actually, someone uh, made a joke the other day. He said um, he lives that side, um, really close to the sea. Yes. <laughs> Not to Somerset West side, to the other side. And he said, they're where the people grow their own flip-flops. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so wow, people yes. are really, the Cape Townians are very much in tune with nature very much mm -hmm. in tune with nature very mm -hmm. much well I, I don't know if it's the fact that they're close to the sea and see what goes on on beaches and the plastic and the whatever so they're very much i mean this side not not the rural areas more this side where people can actually um spend money to make something like they will yes they i will think that's more the thing if, if if and that's everywhere i mean mm. that's the rural areas i would say Worcester, that side Montague is even worse mm. because uh, well better or worse i don't know if it's better or worse <laughs> <laughs> but that you will you will find that in the western k people have a mindset yeah of if i can make this myself mm. i'm not gonna buy it if I cannot make that element, I will buy that element to make that. Yes. So we are less prone to just go and buying stuff randomly. Yes. yes. Just for the sake of buying it. Yeah. But I think that's also absolute difference in income. Mm -hmm. One of the things is a difference in mm -hmm. income. Mm -hmm. But also maybe just just lifestyle in general mm -hmm. i mean i've got friends living there in joburg and their lifestyle and they're catonians originally mm -hmm. and their lifestyle is just completely different it's yeah. such a it's such a fast-paced lifestyle mm -hmm. that i think it has come to a point when I, I, I'm, I'm running into this place and i'm buying what i see yeah. and i'm running out mm -hmm. um rather than because this Cape Western Cape side is much slower. Absolutely. It's a much slower lifestyle. Absolutely. So we will rather go and buy something that we can make something up because we have time to make you that sort of thing. Absolutely. I um, think we I've got a theory about it. Actually my husband came up with this theory. <laughs> I think it's the we the weather. It must because be the weather. You have to always have a plan B. Because if you decide, oh, we're going to have a party or a bri on Saturday. And Saturday comes and the morning looks beautiful. And by lunchtime, it, I will show you what it looks like today. And it's <laughs> yes, you cloudy. still have to do your tour. And you know we're in an <laughs> hour now. <laughs> it's, it's cloudy and it's, it's just miserable outside with the wind blowing. Yes. You still have to do your washing and whatever, even if it looks like this. Um, and then suddenly, oh, we can't have a bri anymore. 
So yes. then you have to have a plan B. I think that's what is that contributes to the whole Cape Townian laid back thing I think because you have to be able to just adapt in a moment's notice. You have to adapt, you have to change, you have to have a second, uh, like a plan B. And so you think we're more adaptable then? Yeah, I think, and it's, I think that brings forward that whole sort of thing of today's, tomorrow's another day. Yes, I, yeah. and, and also I think in, in the Western Cape there's a, I don't know what, I think it really is also if you go look at the history of Cape Town mm. versus Joburg, mm. I think the, as I keep repeating myself repeatedly, it is just a lifestyle thing. And um, okay, but then on the other hand, you will probably find that there are far more houses in Cape Town or in the Western Cape with tumble dryers than in Joburg. Mm -hmm. Yes, because our it's washing... It's a necessity. <laughs> it doesn't, just doesn't dry. But, no, 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 that's interesting. I'll, I'm actually going to think about that. Because but I mean, if you think about uh, Joburg, was, it was developed as a metro. It yes, was developed... It to, was developed that was, from scratch. Yeah, yes. it was the place where everything happened the business happened yes while down here people were making uh, making wine and it was just more farm life i mean if you look mm -hmm. at durbanville we're surrounded by farms and i mean it's like a farmer will tell you well it, it will rain when it rains like you can't yes, hurry so anything and you can't push yes, anything you exactly can't, you have to yeah. just take it as it comes and i think that's what's that is what makes Cape Townians different. And I th even in the city life, because, I mean, we mm. went to sit the city the other day, mm. and people there have this real type of hippie mentality, you know? And I'm saying that with the greatest amount of love, because, because you're I, mean, hippie, I have that same type of hippie mentality. <laughs> of, you know, exactly what you say, you know what, tomorrow is another day. Yeah. We can't do everything today, mm. even though we would like to push it into one space. Mm. And... Um, in that respect, I think we'll probably find a lot of the same thing then in the free state. I haven't been in the free state enough. Durban is a planet on its own. <laughs> um, although we've been to the Midlands and you will find the same type of mentality in the Midlands mm. as you do in Cape Town. So yeah. it all depends on each area and what they want and mm. how they perceive the processes yeah. of creation yeah. and creativity. Yeah. Uh, Cape Town is definitely a slower place. I like Cape Town. I'm not going to Joburg. Yeah. Let's talk about, we are like over an hour. Okay. Do your tour. All right. But you're going to have to grab that thing oh. and hold it. Okay. So behind me, yeah. Let me get up. I was sitting here. Um, ooh, poop. Um, <laughs> You're going to have to hold it or it's going to fall no, off. No, I want to show them all the yarns. So okay, there's cool. all the bamboo yarns. The new ones. And then on this side is all the other skeins. All the all hangs. I don't, I don't know how, how do you call it. I call it skeins. It's a skein. Um, and then we've got a table here. This table normally has a winder here as well, but we took it off for the video. And then this side is the um, Umbala kits that I talked about. And the soap making stuff is all the way there. Sorry, I can't really see what I'm doing. That's my house. Don't look there. <laughs> <laughs> and then this side is a table with all the DIY stuff for the oils. And these boxes have got a camp, oil camp stuff in it. So... Um, there we go and then we come around that's my husband's office don't look there and then we back this side <laughs> <laughs> and and i just did a quick tour of the shop while she was um, touring so i don't know no don't worry we're gonna be skewed yeah it's okay <laughs> it's supposed to be uh, all right well there what we're we gonna do is we're gonna say goodbye <laughs> now because we're like over an hour <laughs> Um, and this is going to be a long one. As I said, I don't edit this stuff out. Mm -hmm. um, it's been lovely chatting to you. Thank you so much. We've been chatting a lot over the phone. Yes, yes, yes. yes. 
Yeah. And there's real value in just talking yeah, to each definitely. other. Yeah, definitely. Just having it. <laughs> okay.